So Nintendo Switch games are going to be $70, maybe even as soon as next year. At least, that's what the internet's trying to tell me. I woke up today very curious about one thing, and that is, what the hell am I going to get for Yulia for breakfast? Because she requested that there was food ready for her when she woke up. No, no. Actually, what I was wondering about was why my timeline, uh, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, etc., are full of all of these videos content creators, fans, tweets of people telling me that Nintendo Switch is about to raise their prices for games such as Tears of the Kingdom to $70. And I understand where people are coming from and why this fear exists. And I do think there will be a time when Nintendo exclusive games are $70. I just don't think it's happening on Switch. And I'm going to explain why in a moment after we obviously look at why people are even thinking this is going to be a thing. $70 Switch games? What? That just sounds insane to me. That being said, we need to thank today's sponsor, eWin Racing. eWin Racing makes some of the most comfortable gaming chairs out there that are affordable. In fact, so affordable, you can use our discount code Nintendo Prime to get 20% off your order. You can get chairs such as the one you see me sit in in almost every video. You know, you can get it for almost 180 bucks right now just by using our discount code with absolutely free shipping. These chairs are super comfortable. Their desks are really nice as well. The armrests are really adjustable. You can actually lean back so far in these chairs, you can basically take a nap. Look, these chairs have done nothing but save my back over the years, and I'm extremely thankful to Ewan Racing. So why don't you go ahead through our link in the description and check out their products. Now, this all started because obviously PlayStation raised prices of their games, especially their exclusives, but third parties followed suit to $70 on PS5. And this was a bit controversial at the time, but obviously it's been a couple years and people don't talk about it that much. But it got brought up yesterday because Xbox is now doing the same thing. See, Xbox was selling their games at $60 brand new, and they're changing tune in 2023. Now, I'm getting this news off IGN, where it says, beginning in 2023, games built for Xbox Series X and S, including Forza Motorsport, Redfall, and Starfield, will cost $69.99 USD at launch. While Xbox has noted that regional pricing may differ, it has not yet given specifics for other countries. This price reflects the content, scale, and technical complexity of these titles, a Microsoft spokesperson told IGN. As with all games developed by our teams at Xbox, they will also be available on Game Pass the same day they launch. So it's not really shocking to see Xbox come up to the price point of PlayStation 5. In fact, there was already third-party games you know, uh, available on Xbox Series X and S selling at $70 and, and quote-unquote getting away with it. So it would make sense for Xbox to match those prices and just kind of make that the new standard since Sony pushed it. Same way, you know, Sony pushed Blu-rays as well and that became a new standard. Sony tends to push things that become standard over time. It just is what that is. What's interesting, of course, is that People aren't happy with $70 because they can barely afford $60. Of course, with inflation, it can be argued that it should have been $70 a long time ago. Of course, all the counter arguments are, hey, at least back then we were getting complete games. Now we get like partial games and we have to buy DLC and we got to, you know, piecemeal uh, free updates down the line. Sometimes games release buggy and broken. Hello, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So... It's, it's a really interesting conundrum trying to intermix, hey, games are higher quality and bigger than ever and the best visuals and really expensive to make and also sometimes not as complete as games we got 20 years ago. It's a weird balancing act, but like it or not, Xbox and PlayStation games are going to be $70. And this has turned Nintendo fans and Nintendo content creators around to be like, well, if everyone else is doing it, you know Nintendo's going to do it too, right? Man, Tears of the Kingdom, 70 bucks, I'd still buy it. Fire Emblem Engage, 70 bucks. I'd still buy it. But here's the thing. Nintendo's probably not going to do it this generation. And I'm going to say this pretty safely because the Switch has been out since 2017. It doesn't really make a lot of sense for a system that's now entering its seventh year on the market. Seriously, once we get to March 4th of 2023, we are officially in the seventh year of Nintendo Switch. Raising the prices seven years in to me, it just doesn't make sense. I don't think we need to worry about any of Nintendo's first party games being $70 next year. In fact, I don't even think third parties are gonna charge $70 next year. I think we're gonna be just fine here on Switch, but it does 
raise the question, whenever Nintendo releases their next gen system and they start to have next generation exclusive games, which should happen pretty quickly, will those games be $69.99, 70 bucks? And that I think is a realistic possibility. I just don't think that's a realistic possibility now, it's also possible Nintendo decides to not do this. They might just go, hey, one advantage we have is not only our ability to offer an amazing library of games and this portable console hybrid thing, but also that our games are super high quality AAA games that we don't sell at a premium price like other people. So they could go that route. I do think, no, the Nintendo's ran by a businessman. And by the time Nintendo does the $70 games, it'll be so standard and accepted across the industry that Nintendo won't even think twice about it. Still, I don't think this is something we need to worry about now. Now, until Nintendo announces something like this, it's not really even something to worry about, but I get it. If Xbox and PlayStation are 70, these games start to be 70 on PC. Nintendo will be the only place where they're not. And then by the time they bring their next generation platform out, third party games might be 70 on Switch. Nintendo could very well raise their prices. So I understand the concern. I don't think we need to worry about it now. So I'm basically telling you, no, Nintendo Switch first party games are not going to be $70 moving forward. Also, whenever the next generation Nintendo device comes around, I think they will. So I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. What do you think about the $70 price point in general? Do you think it's fair because of inflation over the years and how prices have been standard like this for 20 years? And we probably should have raised prices on this a while ago. Do you think it's not fair? Do you think this is dumb? I kind of lean towards the whole, look, video games have always been a luxury entertainment medium. There are plenty of games you could play free to play if you don't have money, right? Grab your phone. Well, I don't have my phone on me, but grab your phone and play Fortnite on it or something. Like There are other ways that you could play video games that aren't so expensive, but the luxury AAA games, the luxury game consoles, they're luxury items. And, and I don't think people understand that video games are sort of a luxury entertainment medium. It's always been pretty pricey to be that kind of a gamer. I think free-to-play has muddled the water a little bit, but there's nothing wrong with free-to-play. Go ahead and enjoy your free-to-play games, and you'll get your compromises with your ads and your microtransactions and all this stuff, your season passes, because they have to make money somehow. But, yeah, I'm... I, I, I kind of think it's an it's an inevitability. I think it's always been an inevitability. And I'm not really that bothered by it because video games are a luxury entertainment, whether you want to believe it or not. Uh, some of us choose to partake in that luxury entertainment even when we can't necessarily afford it. Uh, some of us can massively afford it, and it doesn't matter either way. So you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm Nathaniel Rubble Jans from Nintendo Pro, and I'll catch you in the next video.